Hello everyone and welcome to another edition of All About the Cars of Gran Turismo 7. In this video we're going to learn all about the 2011 Audi R18 TDI. Now, this is a GR1 race car and it costs 3 million credits to purchase it at the Brand Central under the Audi dealership. Now we're going to start with this car by going over some of its specs. So this car comes with 859.41 performance points. It has an MR drivetrain, meaning that the engine is situated at the middle of the car and the rear wheels drive the car. The maximum power is 532 horsepower at 4,800 RPM. The weight is just under 2,000 pounds and the engine is turbo aspirated. Now we're going to click on this car and it only comes in one color, which is the color that you see here with the livery on it. And we're going to click on learn more and see what Martin has to say about this car. You're looking at the Audi's prototype race car called the R18 TDI. Built in 2011, the R18 TDI was primarily used in endurance races, such as the 24 Hours of Le Mans. It was raced by Team Jost, which worked closely with Audi in many of its race efforts. Providing the power was a turbocharged 3.7 liter V6 diesel engine that produced 532.5 horsepower. In the Le Mans race in 2011, it famously battled with Peugeot, where it proved victorious. Alright, that's everything we can learn about this car from Brand Central, so we're going to back out to the main menu now. And go to the garage, where I'll get into this car, and we'll learn some more about it. So here at the garage, I'm going to click on Change Car, and we're going to scroll down to this Audi, which is right here. I'm going to click on this car, we'll listen to the startup sound, and then we'll learn some more about it. Alright, we're going to click on Car Collection, go to this car, and we'll learn some more by reading this short description about it. This diesel-powered R18 TDI scored yet another victory for Audi at the 24 Hours of Le Mans in 2011. The Audi R18 TDI is a prototype race car developed by Audi to run in endurance races such as the famed 24 Hours of Le Mans. This model takes its heritage from a series of diesel-powered race cars such as the R10 in 2006 and the R15 in 2009. However, the major difference compared to previous Audi LMP1 machines is that the car features a closed body again for the first time since the 1999 R8C. While the previous R15 produced 591.7 horsepower from its 5.5 liter V10 turbo power plant, the R18 produces 532.5 horsepower from a 3.7 liter turbocharged V6. The closed body design was utilized to alleviate this loss of power by improving aerodynamics. The necessity for these changes was due to the car's chief design directive to incorporate a futuristic hybrid system which required the car to be as light as possible. This was the main reason for choosing a lighter V6 over a more powerful V8, the cylinder count of which was perfectly allowed by race regulations. The body is, of course, a carbon monocoque, and even the gearbox housing is made of carbon fiber to save weight. Much thought was also given to designing the 120 degree V6 that mounts a single turbo between the cylinder banks. In doing so, Audi was able to lower the center of gravity and increase airflow on both the intake and exhaust sides of the engine. The car's racing debut was in the second race of the LMS, or Le Mans series, in May of 2011. In the pinnacle of the series, the 24-hour race, the car from Team Jost, driven by Benoit Treloyer, Andre Lauderer, and Marcel Fassler, achieved the ultimate goal, an overall win. So lots of great information about this car from Gran Turismo's description, and I apologize if I butchered the names of the drivers, but uh, I wasn't 100% sure how to pronounce them. So now we're going to back out to the main menu once again, and go to the cafe where we'll see if anybody is here to talk to us about this car.
And we have one person, and that's Jeremy. So let's see what he has to say. This Audi takes me back to the 2011 Le Mans 24-hour race. Incredibly, it crossed the finish line and won the competition. A nail-biting 13.845 seconds before the second-place Peugeot. Rarely has Le Mans had such a close race. Although Audi bested Peugeot in terms of speed, the same couldn't be said about fuel efficiency. Peugeot tried to use this to their advantage by taking as few pit stops as possible. So while Audi was making excellent time, it couldn't quite shake Peugeot. But in the end, Audi's speed won out, eking out a victory against its competitor. All right, that's everything we can learn about this car, but we're going to make one final stop down at the tuning shop where I'll show you everything that can be done to improve this car's performance and power. Now, one thing you have to remember before we start here at the tuning shop is that this already comes as a bona fide race car. So a lot of the parts here at the tuning shop are not going to be available, but there are a couple of things that you can add to the car to give you that little extra edge. So we're going to go through this and see what is available. Under the sports category, the only thing that's available are the tires. Under club sports, it's much the same. Actually, the only two things that are available are power reducers, such as the power restrictor and the ballasts. Under semi-racing, you can add a fully customizable computer, a medium RPM turbocharger, the fully customizable LSD, and the fully customizable manual transmission, but everything else on this page is not available. Under the racing category, you can add a racing muffler, the slotted discs racing brake kit, the brake balance controller, the fully customizable suspension, the fully customizable racing transmission, and any of the racing tires. So while there isn't a whole lot that you can add to this car, there is enough that can give you that little extra edge to get you over the finish line first. And as you can see, with this car being fully upgraded, I got it up to 942.99 performance points. And we have 976 horsepower here, too. All right, well, that's everything we can learn about this car from Gran Turismo 7. So I hope you enjoyed the video, and I hope it helps you to determine whether or not you'd like to add this car to your collection. Stay tuned for more videos highlighting all of the cars of Gran Turismo 7. Don't forget to like and subscribe to our YouTube channel. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you next time.